Hey there, Jen Dyes here with Status Coup with an update for you about Tara Reid, who is a former Senate aide of Joe Biden's, who has come forward with an allegation of sexual harassment and sexual assault. We did a story for you the other day, a video for you the other day, based on the Intercepts reporting by Ryan Grimm that Time's Up, a prominent organization that is supposed to be helping people bring forward Me Too accusations of sexual harassment and sexual assault has declined to help Tara with her accusation against Joe Biden because he is a presidential candidate. So let's get a quick refresher on that and then we'll move on to additional reporting that has come out since then. And trigger warning, a lot of this is extremely, extremely triggering. Tara goes into great detail about a sexual assault that she says that she alleges happened to her at the hands of Joe Biden. So if this is triggering for you, please do not watch. This is important reporting and it's, it is difficult reporting, but it needs to get out there. Of course, I have to say that status quo has not independently um, investigated these claims. We are only reporting on Tara's own words and reporting out of other outlets. At the moment, we are we have reached out to Tara Reed for an interview, so hopefully she will get back to us. And we have also reached out to the Time's Up organization, as well as the Joe Biden campaign for comments. So we will update you as we get more information coming in ourselves. For now, we are just relaying the allegations, not making any allegations ourselves. So with that out of the way, here is a quick summary of Ryan Grimm's reporting in The Intercept. Time's Up, which of course is backed by a lot of high-powered celebrities and leftist kind of people that are in the spotlight, Time's Up said it could not fund a Me Too allegation against Joe Biden, citing its nonprofit status and his presidential run. So we've already gone over this reporting in a different video, so check that out if this is a completely new story for you. What I want to focus on for right now is the fact that and there's Tara, who, again, had tried to bring these allegations forward before and was not able to or was kind of scared away from it because she was smeared as a Russian operative or as a Russian agent and so kind of got intimidated. Then she decided to come forward with uh, the help of Time's Up, who told her that they, in the end, that they could not help her because he is a presidential candidate and that they were afraid that it would impact their nonprofit status. So what I want to point out to you right now is the public relations firm that works on behalf of the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund is SKD Knickerbocker, whose managing director, Anita Dunn, is the top advisor to Biden's presidential campaign. A spokesperson for Biden declined to comment. The SKDK spokesperson assigned to Time's Up referred questions back to the NWLC. Again, the public relations firm that works on behalf of the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund is SKD Knickerbocker, whose managing director, Anita Dunn, is the top advisor to Biden's presidential campaign. So think about this for just a second. I know you're a smart person. You don't need me to connect the dots for you. Time's Up, an organization that's supposed to help people, supposed to help with their massive amounts of funding that they raised via GoFundMe, I believe it was. They, they um, crowdfunded via one of these crowdfunding sites. I believe it was $24 million. And they're supposed to be helping people with a legal fund to bring their cases forward. But they declined to help Tara Reid because her allegation is against Joe Biden. Joe Biden is a presidential candidate. Well, isn't it convenient that the PR firm connected with Time's Up is also connected with the Joe Biden campaign and that they, Time's Up then declined to bring her case forward after being initially okay with it. It didn't get knocked down until it went to higher up levels. Very, very disturbing. So here is Anita Dunn on the SKD Knickerbocker website, the PR firm. Uh, we don't need to read about her. We just see that she is right there. Oh, and look at this. Joe Biden shakes up campaign leadership, elevating Anita Dunn. This Anita Dunn. Boy, do they look similar. Maybe it's because they are the same person. 
Ms. Dunn, who worked in the Obama White House, is taking on a new role as Mr. Biden seeks a reset after a disappointing fourth place finish in Iowa. So this was way back in February, on February 7th um, of this year, of course. But just goes to show you that Mr. Biden is giving effective control of the campaign to Anita Dunn, a veteran Democratic operative and top advisor to him. She will be working closely with us on campaign strategy and overall coordination on budget and personnel as we build a bigger campaign for the next phase. Of course, I can't say that this is the only reason why, but I can say that other lawyers, uh, based on reporting in The Inter Intercept, basically have said, no, there's no reason why Time's Up couldn't have helped Tara Reid. As long as they weren't directly pushing buttons for, you know, against Joe Biden, they could have remained neutral and still helped Tara Reid bring her case forward. So we have put out, again, we've put out questions two times up about this. We will see what they say. But the fact is that it sure looks shady that Anita Dunn is at the top of both the PR firm for Time's Up as well as for the Joe Biden campaign, and that this allegation against Joe Biden was shot down, you know, they wouldn't help her. Sure looks bad. So we will update you as we get more information in about that. Next, I want to get into more detail. And again, this is disturbing levels of detail. If this will trigger you, please don't watch. This is, this is serious stuff. It's really disturbing stuff, this allegation against Joe Biden. So Katie Halper has done great reporting and great interview, a great interview with Tara Reid. So I'm going to play an excerpt of that and as well as show you some of Katie Halper's um, tweets, which are, I think, important to kind of show you what's going on here or what these allegations are. So this is a story that, uh, excuse me, that Tara Reid at Reed Alexandra has been trying to tell since it happened in 1993. So for those people who say, why is she just coming out with this story right now? Why didn't, why is, did she plan it around the presidential election? Well, she's been trying to get it out since the 90s, since the early 90s. So keep that in mind. Tara had come forward about her about part of her story after Lucy Flores accused Biden of touching her inappropriately. Reed was one of the seven other women to share their own stories about Biden. Reed told reporters about the way he would put his hands on her shoulders and note that number right there, seven. In addition to Lucy Flores, in addition to Tara Reed, there are still six other women that have allegations against Joe Biden. That doesn't seem to be making the mainstream news, does it? Again, Reed told reporters about the way he would put his hands on her shoulders, run his fingers up and down her neck. She considered talking about the rest of her story, but she didn't because of her claims of sexual harassment got her doxxed and smeared as a Russian agent. That was April 2019. Then in January 2020, Reed tried to come forward again. This time to Time's Up, uh, the Time's Up organization. As Ryan Grimm reported on at The Intercept, the organization said they couldn't help her because Biden was a candidate for federal office and supporting a case against him could jeopardize their nonprofit status. Grimm also pointed out that the public relations firm that works on behalf of the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund is SKD Knickerbocker, whose managing director, Anita Dunn, is the top advisor to Biden's presidential campaign. Not surprisingly, there were no witnesses to the alleged sexual assault. But Tara's brother and her good friend, each of whom I'm spoke, I've spoken with, recall being told about the assault by Tara at the time. This is a story that should have been looked into. Tara reached out to countless people to try to get her story out. Nobody would. Not even the one organization that was made to support women like her. So find more information at KT Helps on Twitter. And... Let's go ahead and listen to Tara's own words to Katie about this sexual assault. This is very, very disturbing. It, it was like the side area. And um, 
he just said, hey, come here, Tara. And then I, I handed him the thing, and he greeted me. He remembered my name. And then it, we were alone, and it was the strangest thing. There was no, like, exchange, really. He just had me up against the wall. And um, I was wearing, like, a skirt and, you know, a business skirt, but I wasn't wearing stockings. It was kind of a hot day that day, and I was wearing heels. And I remember my legs had been hurting from the marble, you know, of the Capitol, mm-hmm. like, walking. And I, so I remember that kind of stuff. I remember, like, I was wearing a blouse, and he just had me up against the wall, and the wall was cold. And I remember he, it happened all at once. The gym bag, I don't know where it went. I handed it to him. It was gone. And then his hands were on me and underneath my clothes. And, um, yeah, and then he went, oh, he went down my skirt, but then up inside it. And he uh, penetrated me with his fingers, whatever. And um, I... Uh, he was kissing me at the same time, and he was saying something to me. He said several things, and I can't remember everything he said. I remember a couple of things. I remember him saying first, before, like as he was doing it, do you want to go somewhere else? And then him saying to me when I pulled away, he um, got finished doing what he was doing, and I kind of was pulled back, and he said, he said, come on, man. I heard you liked me. Mm-hmm. And it's that phrase stayed with me because I kept thinking, what I might have said, and I can't remember exactly if he said I thought or if I heard, but it, it, it's like he implied like that I had done this, like I don't know. And for me, it was like every everything shattered in that moment because I knew like we were alone, it was over, right? He wasn't trying to do anything more, but it's I looked up to him. He was like my father's age. He was this champion of women's rights in my eyes, and. I couldn't believe it was happening. It didn't see, it seems surreal. And I, I just, I knew, I, I just felt sick because he, when he pulled back, he looked annoyed and he said um, something else to me that I, I don't want to say. And then he said, he, I must've looked shocked and he grabbed me by the shoulders. I don't know how I looked, but I must've looked something because he grabbed me by the shoulders and he said, you're okay. You're fine. You're okay. You're fine. And then, he walked away and he went on with his day. And what I remember next is being in the Russell building, like where the big windows are and the stairs by myself and my body, I was shaking everywhere because, and it was cold. All the- Obviously that's a very hard story to listen to and it's important. And I recommend that you listen to it in full. I will leave the link in the description so that you can do that and so uh, Tara's story can get out there and be heard. Again, status quo is not alleging anything. We are simply reporting on Tara's words and we hope to get Tara on as well. I want to leave you with this. In 2018, Joe Biden indicated that when a woman alleges sexual assault, presume she is telling the truth. So are all these Me Too proponents, these leftist Democrat elite people, these celebrities, when they're shouting, believe women, does that include women who have what look like credible accusations, allegations against someone that you like, does that count? These women behind Time's Up, does it count when the allegations are against someone that you you like? Or just when it's against someone like Donald Trump? Of course it counts. Anyone who is a proponent of Me Too should be shouting this from the rooftops, investigating, looking into this, talking about it, getting the story out there, just like they would for someone they don't like, just like they would for a Republican, just like they would. Imagine Bernie Sanders has no allegations against him. Imagine if there were. Can you like 24 seven CNN that might even break through the coronavirus um, discussions. Can you imagine 
So this double standard should not stand. It cannot stand. As a woman, I am infuriated that people aren't talking about this, that it's up to people like Ryan Grimm at The Intercept, that it's up to people like Katie Halper, Crystal Ball, and Sagar um, and Jetty just had her on as well. Is it just up to the so-called fringe to talk about this? That's not fair, and that's not supporting women. So I expect all of those Me Too proponents to be up in arms about this, to be talking to Tara when and if she wants to talk more. It's sickening, these sides people choose. The fact that people only care about the truth when it, when it, it benefits them in some way. No, you have to care about the, the truth. And I am not saying that this is the truth. These are allegations. What I am saying is, in, gen in general, people only seem to care about the truth when it benefits them. People only seem to care about allegations and accusations when it benefits them. So, Joe Biden, what's the move? So, time's up, what's the move? So, Me Too proponents, what's the move? Are you going to care? Or are you going to put your head in the sand because it doesn't benefit you? We will stay on this story and we will stay on the truth. We will stay on whatever happens. We will stay on the allegations. We will stay on the responses. We will stay on it all here at Status Quo. Thank you.